Emma Parkin from Save the Children, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Well, let's get an academic perspective on this. And we can speak to Dr Nando Sagona in Oxford. He's a senior lecturer in migration studies at the University of Birmingham and one of the founding editors of the Migration Studies Journal. Uh, Dr Sagona, thank you very much for, for joining us this evening. Pleasure. What merit is there, do you think, in David Cameron's decision to take refugees from camps outside Syria rather than those who are already in the EU? The, the, um, the British government has been clear since the beginning that uh, they didn't want to promote uh, irregular crossing. So the assumption is that if we take uh, my refugees directly from the camps, this will not look as an incentive for people to, to try to reach the EU borders. Uh, is this going to work? Uh, well, we're going to see. It's, the fact is that the numbers that have been mentioned are clearly unambitious uh, for the scale of the crisis we are seeing. Let's look at the case of uh, Aylan Kurdi, the little boy whose body we've seen uh, was washed up in, in Turkey. How important are individual stories like that, do you believe, in changing perceptions? I think are extremely important because we have seen now since uh, the late 2013, with, when there was the first tra big tragedy in Lampedusa, that the European uh, politician seems to be responding to dead bodies. Essentially, if there is a, ma a large tragedy, so if there are very powerful images, they seem to have somehow have to be forced to respond also to the solidarity that comes from EU citizens. So, unfortunately, images like this may have a big impact. The problem is that uh, we must hope that it's not just basically uh, pay um, lip services to the crisis, you know, just next week everyone will forget that image and everything will go back as it was. We need to have uh, make an effort to put continued pressure on the government, especially the UK government, that has been very um, resistant to uh, take responsibility for the, the migration crisis. It's true that they're putting money into the refugee camps, but after four years of civil war in Syria, this is clearly not enough. You cannot just warehouse people. People need a future, they need hope, they need uh, the possibility to go to school. And nowadays, if you look at Lebanon, the Syrian refugees that go to school are really a tiny minority. So you've got a generation of kids that have lost four years of education. That's why people are trying to reach Europe, because, because of hope. I want to just ask you, it's a big question, but I need you to answer it briefly if you can. Uh, you talk about, we'll forget about, we might, there's a risk we might forget about this, uh, this, this crisis. Can we? What's the scale of it compared with others that we've seen in the past? Well, the, um, if you look at the global refugee crisis, which is uh, as clear as the UNCR has pointed out, uh, we got 60 million uh, forced migrants dizzy in, in the world at the moment, so it's by far the largest number of uh, forced migrants since the creation of the UN, Com UN Commission for Refugees. That's true. If you look at Europe, um, a similar crisis happened with, uh, with the end of Yugoslavia, so b basically the 1990s, especially the beginning. The number were more or less the same. And actually, if you look at Germany, Germany received more Yugoslavian refugees than Syrian refugees. So it's, it's not unprecedented. And if you look at more in general, uh, refugee crises are cy cyclical, cyclical, like uh, they, they come in cycles. It's not a constant. So every, and they are really responsive to the geopolitical conditions. Dr. Nando Sigona from the University of Birmingham, thank you very much for your time this evening. You're welcome. Let's look at some other news this evening now. And four men have pleaded guilty to conspiracy to burgle in connection with the Hatton Garden safe deposit raid, which saw more than £10 million 